I hope that you're having a good day and it's good to be with you again for this IT worship service. We're nearing the end of the church year. In fact, next Sunday will be Christ the King Sun. Well, Christ the King Sunday will be in two weeks, excuse me. But um, as we end the, approach the end of the church year, we find discussion about the second coming of our Lord, the parousia, the end of time as we, as we know it. And we're gonna explore that a bit this morning. The end is near our lessons for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost are telling us. There's no doubt about it. The warnings are dire. The tone of today's text is, well, ominous. But the baptized know how to live in the meantime. The baptized are strengthened for the living of these days in word and sacrament. The baptized rally around the invitation of the apostle, do not be weary in doing what is right. Again, it is good to have you with us. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, Without you, nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our roller and guide, we may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. the words from Psalm 98, and this will be the basic text for our message today. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The word of the Lord, the word of life. And now I will share the gospel lesson for this weekend 
in the church here with you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another and all will be thrown down. They asked him, teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, let me correct one thing. I'm going to actually go back to my first thought. Things get a little confusing near the end of the church year with Christ the King Sunday, and then the next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. Christ the King would be next Sunday, first Sunday in Advent this year, comes a little earlier than, than sometimes we remember experiencing it, instead of it being the first Sunday in December this year because of the layout of the rest of the year. And when Christmas follows, the first Sunday in Advent will actually be November 27th. So Christ the King, the last Sunday of the church year, is next Sunday, November 20th. I was getting my weeks a little mixed up here, forgetting where we stand right now in November. But now let us pray. Lord God, as we near the end of this church year, we give you thanks and praise for all the blessings and guidance you have given us throughout this current year. And we pray, Lord, as we meditate more near the end of the church year on the parousia, the second coming. And that theme, of course, will take place of the first couple of weekends in Advent. We know that our job isn't to try to predict when it's going to come, but to live as your faithful servants, trusting in you, knowing that when you are ready to usher in the end of the age, when you are ready for the second coming, it will happen. May we always be your faithful disciples, living in hope, peace, joy, and love. Those themes of the upcoming Lent or Advent season. Amen. I think it's safe to say that as a people, virtually all of us are insecure to one degree or another. Oftentimes we look to people to be our gods, people that we can emulate, thinking if we can just do it like they do it, we're going to feel a lot better about ourselves. Or we look to things or places to try to secure our sense of well-being and identity and confidence in life. If I just have enough things, I'm going to feel really good about myself. If I can visit enough places, be a great traveler, gosh, what a security that will bring. But all these things sooner or later disappoint. Why? Because they're fallible. But there is one sovereign God. And remember the first commandment, 
I am the Lord your God. You are to have no other gods. Today's psalmist has it right. Psalm 98 is a hymn for the enthronement festival, emphasizing the coming of God to God's people as a warrior king. The psalm celebrates the victory of the Lord over the forces of evil, a victory that brought peace and justice to the world. Verses 1 through 3 in our psalm invite Israel to sing praise. God loves and is faithful to his people. This means victory over evil. Then verses 4 through 6 invite all the world's people to join in on the song. Finally, verses 7 through 9 invite even the inanimate elements of the world to praise God. This worldwide rejoicing symbolized by song and the instrumental music of the festival procession is creating an atmosphere of incredible rejoicing. Our gospel lesson then assures us that while life can be tough with persecution, our sovereign God is ultimately in control. And may we never lose that insight. May we always celebrate that and be confident in it. For we need God as our deity. We can't do any better. We do well to keep people and things in proper perspective and know that God is omnipotent or all powerful and benevolent or all good. May we join the psalmist in singing praises to God. We do that corporately here in church. There's a real strength here where we have our music playing and we're joined together in singing praises to God, thanking God, praying to God on behalf of the world and other people and ourselves, and in which we experience God's grace coming to us through word as you are on this service here and through the celebration of Holy Communion. We are blessed people in worship. We indeed are fortified, we're strengthened. We're reminded again of God's love for us and we feel the spirit welling that trust up in us whereby we surrender ourselves to God and obediently serve as God's disciples. So corporate worship or IT worship are very important in our lives, as is doing devotions individually or maybe with our spouse or our families in, or a small group as we have here on Thursdays at 1215 when we do our midweek devotion. Doing devotions is a way just to remind us of God's love for us and God's grace for us. So as we worship together, as we do individual devotions, as we take in IT worship services, we are reaping benefits. For we experience and we live in God's grace and there's nothing better than that. This keeps us grounded, it keeps us focused. It makes us disciples in God's world. So don't be about counting the days as some Christians do. When will the end come? Trying to predict exactly when that might be. Rather, rather live in God's amazing promises. Amen.
united with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for the challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the orderly beauty that you have created. Teach us to treasure the cycles of rest and new life. Help us to care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise up on all who are sick, especially those we have listed on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. We especially lift up this congregation as we call a new pastor. Highlight ways that we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Counseling God, abide with all those who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our well, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.